In recent months, prominent Welsh politicians have been urging the people of Wales to adopt healthier lifestyles. But one well-known TV doctor is likening today's excess in eating and drinking to the smoking culture of the 1960s. We dive deeper into this topic. Dr. Chris, what's the connection between today's food and alcohol culture and the smoking culture of the 60s? There are similarities in how these products were and are marketed. Decades ago, smoking was available everywhere, aggressively marketed 24-7, and extremely cheap. People didn't just quit because they were victims of predatory marketing practices. The same goes for food and alcohol today. Ultra-processed foods and alcohol are marketed as addictive products in a light-touch regulation environment, just like tobacco was in the past. Your new book, Ultra-Processed People, talks about this issue. Can you explain what ultra-processed food is? Ultra-processed food is highly altered from its original state, containing additives and ingredients not typically found in a regular kitchen. They are often wrapped in plastic and make up a significant portion of the British diet. These foods are processed, calorie-dense, low in fiber, and addictive in a way that whole foods are not. You argue that the blame lies with social inequality and poverty. Can you elaborate? Poverty creates a breeding ground for harmful health behaviors. The stress and trauma of living with low income manifest in higher smoking rates and increased consumption of ultra-processed food and alcohol. These substances become short-term solutions to the discomfort of their lives, and they are particularly vulnerable to the aggressive marketing tactics that target them. Martin, how do you see the relationship between social deprivation and alcohol and drug problems? There's a clear link. People in deprived situations have a poor diet, making alcohol more impactful. A large portion of people with drug and alcohol problems have suffered trauma when young. Those who start in better social positions might have more recovery blocks like income and a job to anchor them. Matt, what's your perspective on this issue from the industry side? We recognize the misuse of alcohol by a minority of people. Most packaging carries drinking guidelines, pregnancy warnings, and signposting to the alcohol education charity Drinkaware. Excessive drinking is widely understood as harmful, and we've seen falls in binge drinking, underage drinking, drink driving, and alcohol-related crime. As the conversation about unhealthy lifestyles in Wales continues, it's essential to consider the broader context of social inequality, marketing practices, and the choices available to individuals. In the end, it is a collective effort of individuals, communities, businesses, and the government to promote healthier lifestyles and make better choices accessible for everyone. Thanks for joining us in this exploration of the food and drink culture in Wales. If you found this video insightful, please give it a thumbs up, share it, and subscribe to our channel for more in-depth discussions.